Hello everyone, this is CJ Novo 992 and today we're back from LeBrand. New video. Today is a video we are here to break down, react and discuss the latest news. You know, the usual. But before we go any further on with today's video, I need to give a special shout out to Deke and the man himself, Mr. Ryan Frickin' Jack, for this fantastic signed early birthday present. I greatly, greatly appreciate it, lads, and I'll try to do it justice. Unfortunately, the content will probably remain just a bit down here. But to business then, shall we? And we are here to talk about a delicious Rangers rumour out of the football club. Now, I'm going to be brutally honest, this may or may not be confirmed by the time I actually edit and upload this video. But anyway, it is a transfer I find very, very interesting, especially when you pair it with the business we've already done this season in terms of letting people go. Now, just in case that and that deliciously clickbaity title doesn't give away, we're of course here to discuss Matt Poster. And the news started to circulate yesterday that Rangers have apparently agreed a 300 slash 400 thousand pound move to move Matty Poster back to the MLS and join New England's revolution. Now, I say 300 slash 400 because Every single report and media outlet is doing a different one, but the most common answer is the 300k transfer fee. And I'll be honest, I remember hearing about it, then reading about it as it just spread absolute like wildfire oil social media. But I remember saying to myself, really, Matty P is one of the first people to be leaving our club this summer. That was very interesting to me because to me, he was solid when Tavernier was out injured. Very neat, very tidy. And to me, he was one of our most consistent players during a time when the word consistent was no thing throughout our squad. But if you actually take him in and you think more into those games that he actually played this season, because that's pretty much it from his time at Rangers, did he ever really put in a performance or really put out a statement performance to make us sit back and say, that's it, we found a right back. We didn't need to worry that Tavernier's missing for the team. I don't think so, and despite how solid he played during his short stint in the first team for Rangers Football Club, I still remember counting the days and counting the games until Tavernier was coming back, and that right there is probably why we find ourselves where we are today, and that's talking about the potential exit of Matty Poster to the MLS. Now, there is one thing I do feel like I need to mention, because I feel like it is going to come up rightly so a lot in the comment section, and that is the fact that Matty Poster's natural position isn't a right back, it's in midfield. And he actually did make a couple of substitute appearances in to the midfield when sort of games were over and it was kind of done and dusty just to sort of see the game out. But I remember for the old memory banks being quite impressed with his physicality and the way he would just dive in a challenges. Even in the old garbage time in games where we were a couple of goals up and it was over, he still find himself about getting stuck in and trying to show what he was all about. And if you follow this channel a lot, you'd have heard me say I did actually have hopes that we'd eventually see Matty Poster in one of these games in the midfield because his height and physical presence and that bite that he clearly has, we've seen that from his short stint getting stuck in quite a bit. I thought that was missing in some of these games where we went to games versus hammer throwers and we were bullied in the midfield. I thought that was missing in those games. But even when the chips were down and the midfield was clearly lacking that bite, not once did Gerard ever turn to Matty Poster and decide that he was the one to change the outcome of the midfield and change the outcome of the game. And that right there probably says more than anything we could possibly say in this video. And that actually leads me to my next talking point in today's video. And if we just go down the cold-hearted approach for this one, because let's be fair, he's a really, really nice guy. He always speaks highly of the club, speaks highly of the fans. He's always got time to talk to the fans. You saw that from his stream, and he clearly loves being everything a part of Rangers Football Club. But from a business perspective, this deal makes a hell of a lot of sense. This is a guy with only one year left on his deal who could sign for a club in six months for absolutely none. In his 16 months at the football club, he's only played 10 games in total and nine of them were this season and the majority of them were down to an injury to Tavernier. So I think if you take all that into consideration and you look at it from that perspective, this right here is very good business from Rangers Football Club. And you know, son, this deal right here is something we've been begging and pleading Rangers Football Club now today for a very long time. No, just to let players who play a couple of games a season run their contracts all the way down, then leave for free. For this deal right here, we are gonna be getting some money back. Now, is that an unbelievable transfer fee? Not, but did Matty P ever do anything in a Rangers shirt to warrant an unbelievable transfer fee? No. And I'll just be brutally honest, I personally think if we do manage to get the £300,000, which again is rumoured to be out there, I think Ross Wilson has done brilliantly to get 
that because if you think it year before before he came in to the job a guy who played week in and week out and a mainstay in this team by the name of Daniel Kandias was sold in the similar circumstances with a year left for only 200k now a year on under Ross Wilson we are selling a guy who's only played 10 games in 16 months for more than that shows we are going in the right direction. And last but not least, regarding this potential deal for Rangers Football Club, how will this impact our squad for the old competition for places? And it's weird to find ourselves where we are now, because if you go back to last year, right, we had Halliday, we had Polster, and we had John Flanagan, all three versatile players that could fill in either side, and we were pretty much stacked, and we were fine for cover. Where we are now, where it stands as I'm currently recording today's video, we have Calvin Bassey for the left-back spot and we have young Nathan Patterson for the right-back. Now everything we've been able to see and hear about young Calvin Bassey sounds like he's a bit a all right and he will be a very good player for us. And over the other side, young Nathan, we have so impressed in January. But if that is how we're going in to next season, I want to ask you watching today's video, would you be comfortable with that as our backups to our starting 11, the two youngsters on either flank, or would you want us to go ahead and bring in another right back to replace the outgoing Matty Poster? The only wee curveball I'd like to throw into this argument is the potential that Ross McCrory could be a backup right back for our football club, and if you actually just look at him and Matty Poster, very, very similar. Best positions, probably midfield, but where do they get played? Usually in defence. Very, very similar, and it might make sense to why we're actually getting rid of Poster, because if we have Ross McCrory there, he can fill in the gaps. And can I just say, by the way, what a plot twist this would actually be if Ross McCrory was used correctly out of his loan to be a fullback, because this was the plan all along to come and have him as a backup right back. What a twist that would be, because we've been fuming. We'd be like, why is he not playing in midfield? Loan's been used wrong. Imagine it's been used correctly. Mind-blowing, ladies and gentlemen, especially considering his most recent appearance for Pompey at right back wasn't exactly good. But it is an interesting one, ladies and gentlemen, so I want to know what your thoughts and opinions are on the old competition for places and where we are going in to next season. And with that being said, that leads us to the last question of today's episode. It's a very simple one on a vast Twitter, so I will jump over and hear from them in a minute. But first, I want to ask you, do you agree with this apparent decision made by Rangers Football Club to sell my poster? Yes, no, maybe so. Let me know down in the comment section below. There's no right or wrong answers. It's all about the discussion. It's all about the debate. That is why the channel exists, so get involved and interact down there in the comment section below. And while you guys do that, this is usually the part where I'll go out and have my say, but if you watch today's video, I've pretty much said all the way through, I kind of agree with the decision. I like Matty Poster. I think he was a very capable backup, but looking at the contract situation, he's not going to get another one. Going ahead and getting some money for it, it all makes complete sense to me, especially when we're bringing Ross McCrory in, who can fill in a couple of positions, and we have the young emerging Nathan Patterson, who continues to turn head every single time he plays. And now that me and the have had their say, let's sit back, relax, and hear from the people on Twitter. Now there's been 1,122 votes and there's still 28 minutes remaining. That right there is unbelievable nation. Thank you so much. And I asked them the exact same question as I asked you. Do you agree with the decision to sell Poster? And this has actually really surprised me, but 78% of the people votes for yes. I honestly thought I was gonna get shouted at in the comment section for what I had to say. It's good to see some people won't shout at me. Ewan McKenzie writes in shame as I was impressed with him the most of the time he played, but he never was good enough to challenge Tav or in the midfield. Andrew Wilson writes in, if we were either promoting Patterson to the first team and having him the backup to right back to actually challenge Tav, or buying a new right back and having a direct competition with him, then yes, always like Poster and don't think he's ever had a proper chance, but it's probably best for him as well. That's an interesting one, Andrew. It is probably best for him to go out there and get minutes because we knew coming into the club his injury history. He missed pretty much 18 months, now he's spent the last 16 months being a backup, so Really good uh, point of view there for Andrew Wilson there. It could be a great thing for him as well. Getting back to what he loves and that is playing football. David White is the next one up and he writes in, I'm somewhere in the middle. He was a versatile squad player and always looked comfortable on the ball and put in a shift. He's hoping to play for the US national team though and I don't see him getting him as many starts at Ibrox so maybe it's best he goes. Matt writes in, made a little bit of profit, decent player but not good enough ultimately. It'll be good to see Parson getting a run out next season. John writes, if it's 300k then no because he's a decent backup option. Never been mad about not starting games and always loves to play for us. Well, maybe that's a bad thing that he was never mad to not starting games. Maybe you need that fire in the belly to keep pushing him. Maybe that's why 
he's actually moving on. But interesting way to look at it there. John Dale Valentine writes in, I'll say yes because that will give young Patterson a chance who's already becoming a fan favourite to shine when needed. I don't think Matt Poster had his heart on Rangers. Well, that's an interesting one. Ian writes in, getting a fee for Deadwood. No brainer. <laughs> <laughs> Ian's not wasting any time ladies and gentlemen Ian's on the ball Susanna writes in we need squad players challenging for the first team poster wasn't challenging for the midfield nor the right back position Jake writes in think he's a decent player who didn't get a chance he was put under the bus for costing us the third goal against Leverkusen yeah he was completely sold on that cut inside there and the last one we'll actually read out tonight's video we'll scroll all the way down to the bottom to give everyone a chance and we'll stop it right here and it comes from Spam1 this Got a feeling it's going to be a cut. But here goes. He writes in, Shamey didn't get a real good run at it with Tav in front of him. Wouldn't blame him for wanting to move on for game time. Just hope we have a decent backup or we have shot ourselves in the foot for only 300k. Apparently. Well, there it is, ladies and gentlemen. I thought that was going to be a sort of a spam message there. But spam won. Wasn't he spam? Mind blown, ladies and gentlemen. But that's it for today's video. You've heard from the people. You've heard from myself. If you haven't done so already, you know what to do by now and as always if you don't mind actually subscribing if you are new to the channel that would be greatly greatly appreciated we have 58% of our regular viewers tuning into every video who isn't subscribed if you could smash that number down and get people hitting that subscribe button it's free doesn't cost you a penny it will only help us on our way to that push to 55,000 subscribers but with everything being said in today's video I'm officially done thank you so much for watching and bye